This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Ho Jeff. Save 25% with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 531. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Jim. And I'm Brian. Hey, thanks for listening. It's uh, right after Valentine's Day, February 20th. Um, Brian, did you have a good Valentine's Day? Uh, Yeah. What'd yeah, you do? Nothing. Oh, even better? Yeah. Uh, we both had to work. Okay. Uh, we don't celebrate fake hallmark holidays so uh yeah it was great we usually don't either like we did when we dated yeah, but yeah. like once we got married we're like ah forget it and so uh you got a visitor over there one of my dogs is coming in to say hi hi molly nope i'm out okay <laughs> see you later um but anyways uh i got into my car that morning on valentine's day and my wife had a box of dots candy and a valentine's day card so then i went i need to go to walgreens to get a valentine's day card at lunch (laughs) (laughs) and you're like oh no man man i hope she doesn't listen to this she knows (laughs) and i brought it home and she and she doesn't listen no she that's true i brought it home and she's like oh how long have you had this six hours maybe six days no you didn't i know i didn't so jeff did you have a great valentine's day you mean, did I have a good Wednesday? Yes. Actually, no. Oh, why? Well, because of Valentine's Day, Scab Jeff canceled our uh, Dungeons and Dragons game, so oh. him, and, him and his wife can do something, and so I had nothing to do on my Wednesday. You could have come over here. We really had nothing going on. Would you have played Dungeons and Dragons? Mm, Frogger. Maybe maybe Frogger. Uh, that's about it. So No. Jim, did you? I had to work. Oh. Was there a lot of people at the bar on Valentine's Day? There were... It was a little busier than normal. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, was there a lot of singles or was it date, like, couples? Lots of singles. Yeah. 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 That's right. I would go to the bar, too, when I was... For Valentine's Day when I was single. We ran uh, single awareness specials. Oh. And we had four people take us up on the specials. That's it. <laughs> wow. Let me ask you this. What is the number one drink you have to make? Not beer, but like specialty cocktail, drink, shot, whatever. We have our house drinks that we make. Okay. What's your, what's your top, most popular one? It's the... We have our take on a Tom Collins. We call it the Dana Collins. Okay. And what is that? It is gin, Mm -hmm. soda water, Mm -hmm. lemonade, sour, and just a splash of black raspberry schnapps. Ooh. And then we have the Herschel Special. It is our house drink and has been for uh, 26 years. years. Mm -hmm. And it uh, is a bunch of clear liquor and fruit juices. That's all we're allowed to say. Gotcha. Happy belated birthday, Herschel. 
Herschel turned 86 on Sunday. Nice. And he still works three days a week with us. Nice. Nice. I like that first one, the Dana Collins. That mm-hmm. sounds really good. I'm not even a big drinker, but that sounds good. Anytime you put black raspberry anything, I'm kind of interested. No. Oh, you don't like black raspberry? I do not. Oh, okay. So, uh, Brian, I yes, apologize sir. since last week I, I, I kind of cut you out here. Uh, what did you watch this week? Anything special? I, I will go right to that. What did you watch? I, I, I want to see your take on it. Uh, I watched Killers of the Flower Moon. How was that? Fantastic. Okay. A uh, little slow. Probably could have been 20-ish minutes shorter. Okay. Three. It was a little over three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, loved it. Okay. It was different enough from the book to where it wasn't, you know, the same or, you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. kind of redundant, but... Uh, I was really impressed with it. Okay. That's on Apple right now. It is. Uh, I think they just said... Oh, Oppenheimer just came to Peacock. Yes. Watched the first half of Oppenheimer. And? Uh, I was really, really, really invested and then just got, like, again, another three, over three hour long movie and fell asleep. Not because of the movie. It was boring. It was Mm. just, like, you know... Yeah, eleven o'clock, and fell asleep. But uh, probably got through half, mm-hmm. and I, I, I'm really excited to finish it. Did Peacock cancel your subscription halfway through, <laughs> like they, Paramount? They did not. Okay, good. Uh, good. They didn't tell me to cancel my subscription. <laughs> we saw you watch Oppenheim. Would you like to cancel? <laughs> no, I'm I'm paid up for another year. <laughs> Would you still like to cancel? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please don't. Considering Paramount is going to be joining with Peacock, they've had initial talks. It's, uh, ah, Paracock. Yes, Paracock. Plus. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, you know it's basically just going to go back to like four streaming services now eventually, right? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I personally hope they call it P-Mount. Ooh. I like Paracock, though. Nah. I like Paracock. Paracock, Paracock plus plus. Ooh, I like that. That's how you know how it's good. Yeah, it's two pluses on it. Yeah. Uh, you watch anything else? Uh, yeah, I watched, uh, I fin- almost finished uh, through episode five on my way out here, uh, Masters of the Air. Oh, okay. Uh, again, like, just A plus. Okay. Probably my second favorite Apple show that they've done. Is it better than Band of Brothers? Or equal footing? Because I've heard both. That's not as good. It's not... It's different. Okay. Like, it's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, I mean, it is, because it's the same subject matter, but it's a different take on it. Yeah, because it's about the uh, uh, pilots in World War II, right? Yep. Yeah. Because Blake was talking last week, I think, he said it was more like you went right into the action. As opposed to Band of Brothers, which had a little bit more backstory. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they haven't really done any kind of, like, story, backstories of these guys. It's, like, literally, like, you meet them, and then they're... In the battle. In flying missions, and then, you know, like, in just, like, what happens in between. And um, But I, I probably, like I said, as of right now, probably would put it, like, my... Tied for my second favorite... Uh, Apple will show that they've done. Is it better than Top Gun 2? It's it's different. <laughs> a little different. A little different. Is it better than the Pacific? Oh, I forgot about that one. So that's way more similar to this than Band of Brothers. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say it's better than the Pacific, but it's... Mm, mm, that's tough. Hey, keep it down out there. Sorry. Green room's getting <laughs> Yell at my kid. Yell at my kid. Green room's getting kind of loud out there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shut that door. Yeah. You can't um, rent here anymore. <laughs> what do you think about these movies, Jeff? <laughs> oh, those suck. <laughs> it's the same movies I showed you. <laughs> hmm. I don't I don't think that I like one over the other. I think they're both I mean, I I, yeah, you don't have to choose. Yeah, we were just I'm asking. just saying. I, okay. I mean, I like they were. They're both very well done. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to answer that question after I finish. How many episodes are left? 
Uh, I believe there are nine total. For, okay. Eight or nine in the part. It's parts. Gotcha. And I just, I have like 15 minutes left of part five. Okay. Right? Anything else you watch? So, so I just want to oh, ask sorry. real quick. So far, is it better than Rocky Four? Ooh, is it more patriotic than Rocky Four? Because that's a pretty patriotic. Nothing's movie. more yeah. patriotic. That's than Rocky true. Four. Is it more jingoistic than Rocky Four? <laughs> Jim, did you watch anything this week? <laughs> uh, I, I watched uh, the most recent episode of Traitors. Oh yeah, we they were got, caught up on that. They got a traitor. Yep, they're down to one traitor. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I, then I missed that episode. I do like. No, you watched it. <laughs> well, then they well, they're down to one traitor, but then they recruit another one. Well, yeah. they are, but you don't know if she's. They say yes yet. She has to. She has to. Or she doesn't she have the option. Or yeah. she gets murdered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did like who she picked. All my kids, my my wife and I were saying you have to pick her. Like that's the one you have to pick. No, really? that's I, the last one I would. Really? Picked. See, I would. Wow. Um, Peter's getting a little too big for his britches. Oh, well, Peter already turned him down. They weren't picking him. No, I know, but he's getting a little big for his britches. There, I would have picked CT. Yeah, I think CT would have been a good pick. I've really grown to like him in this. He's uh, good. Yeah. I mean, he's much better than the roided out freak that he was on the fir- on the real world and on the first like fifteen seasons of the challenge. All I'm saying is that the little torch ceremony where they got to save people and traitors. <laughs> oh my god, get over it if you didn't get picked. I know. I'm like, geez, well, Pete, you're playing a game. And it's like, oh well, John didn't pick me either. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah, there were there were seven people he didn't pick. Yeah. Get over it. I'm like, oh my god! I was very happy they got a uh, Pharaoh or Phoebus or whatever her Phaedra. name was, Phaedra, whatever. I'm glad they got rid of her. Oh no, 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 she's no, still no, there. No. They got Who's, rid of Parvati. Parvati, that's Parvity. it. Poverty or whatever her name is. She annoyed the hell out of me. Get her are, out of here. Are these real people? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're well, AI. One's a real housewife. Phaedra's uh, a real housewife. Okay. If that's a person, I don't know. But hey, Brian, AI generated. Not that tracks. Uh, did you see on the that Michael Jordan's son and Scotty Pippen's girl uh, daughter got engaged? Wife, ex wife. Oh, is it? That's his Pippen's ex wife. Oh, that's Pippen's ex wife. Yes. Oh, I thought that was his daughter. No. Oh, that's even scandalous. And married my, is my, marrying Michael Jordan's son. son. Yes, because they got, were together, broke up, and then got engaged. Mm-hmm. Like most normal families, uh, relationships work. So, yep, that's how most of yeah. them work. I feel like if those two crazy kids can't make it work, I don't know who will. Yeah, Larsa Pippen out from uh, Real Housewives fame. Okay, okay, and then he's like a fashion designer, a fashion mogul. Is he on Real Housewives? No. Okay. Do you he watch might Real be Housewives? Next season. He might be. Yeah, he might be next year. Jeez, what city are they based out of? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Chicago. I didn't know they had a Real Housewife Chicago. I don't know if they do. Um, Could be D.C. So let me ask you this. You're the reality guru here, reality TV guru. Kate is on Below Deck. Yes. What the fuck is Below Deck? You've you've never seen Below Deck? No. Jim's talked about Below Deck. I know, but I, I haven't paid attention. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't understand what it is. Below Deck, it's they follow the crew of okay. a uh, yacht, like a rentable yacht. And, and is Kate one of the workers, or is she the... They, they, they follow the workers. She was the head... She's like, she's like the head uh, stew. Oh. Which, like, she's in charge of everything that goes on the inside. It, yeah, the interior. You know. Oh, wow. So okay. it, she takes care of, like, the guest needs and the house cleaning and stuff like that. Okay. They, they serve the meals. And then they have the outside group is led by the bosun, and mm-hmm. they take care of all the stuff the boat needs, uh... Okay. Take like land, like uh, take out departure and uh, arrival. Uh, then they put out all. And if they have all any, the water toys, water toys and, and like, do you any, watch this? I've my, my sister watches it, so I'll watch it. Oh, okay. Sometimes when she watches it, because uh, a lot of these shows that we turn like the the people from the reality show on Traders, my wife and I are like, what the hell is this show? Uh, I think the one is Bling Empire. I don't know what Bling Empire is. Kevin's from... Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know what that one is. Uh, he's grown on me. He's not as well, bad. Well, considering the first episode, they, he was talking to somebody, and they're like, oh, that's uh, Bananas and CT. They're from The Challenge. It's like, what's... What? Ch- the Challenge what? <laughs> the show, The Challenge. What's that? <laughs> 
it's a show. And <laughs> you didn't you knew you were going on the show with these people and you did no homework. Correct. Correct. But he's still on it somehow. He is still on it because he made an alliance. And the bachelors, except for Peter, like re- the people for, on the Bachelor, they were not as bad as I thought they were going to be. Someone other than Peter was from the Bachelor. Uh, first season, there was. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, well, Ari's a dick. Yeah, yeah. But it was fun. Mm. <laughs> uh, nobody on from the Golden Bachelor at is on Bachelor is on there yet. So uh, it's well, next yeah. season. We're not sure they're alive. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah that that shows on way past their bedtime. <laughs> Uh, anything else, Jim? No, not really. I just watched more uh, uh, web web t- web series on like D and D stuff, okay. which you guys would get bored if I talked about. Oh, okay. Like more bored than I talk about reality television. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, uh, too sorry. I'm too. Well, well, well I, I'm going to interrupt you because I'm going to talk. Go and, ahead. And, and since we're talking about you know the the what you call it people's the traders the traders. Uh huh. I started. I was watching Netflix. I finished watching The Devil's Plan, so I moved on and I watched uh, one that they just released. And now you made me forget the name of Squid it. Squid Games. No, it was The okay. Trust. Okay. Where it was pretty much, hey, we've got a quarter of a million dollars. It's yours as long as everyone agrees to split it evenly. And then we're going to play games to make you all hate each other. <laughs> this is a British show? Nope. American? It's an American show. Oh, okay. It's, it's on Netflix. I guess it came out this past month or something. It's, oh. it's new on Netflix. And so, they, yeah, 11 people come in to split a quarter of a million dollars. and, and Can you vote people out? And you, you can vote people out. Like, you, you can either... Vote to not vote anybody out, but if one person gets a vote, or whoever gets the most votes is out. So, but one if ten of the eleven vote no, and one person says I want to get rid of so and so, they're gone. Out. Wow! So uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, and they do their best, the people, the producers, to make these people get mad at each other. <laughs> they play little games, mm. and apparently half these people don't understand how game playing works yeah. because they like do stuff to piss off the people who then are going to vote them out. Are they reality show people or real people? Just regular people. Okay. Okay. And did they do a good job of bringing on like bigots and racists so people naturally hate each other? No, they didn't really do that. I don't I don't think anybody Not yet. you know as far nobody on there was hated someone because of just who they were. They didn't have any of that. That like, could get interesting. <laughs> I get along with everybody, except for, except Eskimos. for Eskimos. <laughs> Cletus Jones here uh, from deep in the heart of Mississippi. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I make uh, robes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, there was there, there's one guy who's like a, a rancher from Texas who has got to be the nicest person in the world. Nicer than um, Matt Gould? Yes. Ooh. Like in his mind, he's like a hundred percent genuine. Let's just split. Let's just split it. Let's all be nice. We'll play this <laughs> show out for a week and then just walk away. And you got other people saying, "Oh man, I came here to get as much as I can for myself." <laughs> well, that's the human and, nature, right? Yeah, and and he just like was getting frustrated every time people are going against the trust, and it's like, dude, that's the game. <laughs> if we're on a game show. And they need to split money between the four of us. Well, five with Blake. Let's mm. all agree. We Let's vote, all agree. We vote Blake we out. Vote Blake we vote Blake out. Blake out. <laughs> I mean, it's 50 50 is going to show up to begin with. <laughs> it, I mean, yeah, so like Blake isn't here this week. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. <laughs> Which is, it really sucks because Miss um, Marbles made that Fruity Pebbles cheesecake this week. And Blake's not here. Oh, I feel so it's bad so for good, him. good, isn't it? it? It is really delicious. I, I, yeah. I can't believe she, she made it the one week Blake's not yep. here. He's banned 50%. He's is, is he down to 500? Yeah. Uh, so, so we all agree that yep. we're just going to split the money, kick Blake out, and split the money, right? Yes. Yeah. Jim? Yes. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Jim. Why do you do this? Why do you have to f- do this? 
Everyone call a truce. A real truce, not a breaker truce. Oh, like I trust that. Yeah, even my kids don't do the truce now. Uh, they're like, hey, Dad, you want to call a truce? Yeah, and then they attack. I'm like, what is this? Isn't that, I thought you taught them that's I what did. a truce I meant. I did, that's what a truce meant. See, in gameplay like that, I've never backstabbed you. Once. Twice. <laughs> Three times, lady. I, I, I tossed one of your kids to a bear, but... Well, that, to be fair. But I was doing it to save another one of your yeah, kids. Yeah, I mean, so it's fine. Um, that was a fun game. <laughs> and then after I watched The Trust, yeah. uh, I got through that one. That was like eight episodes. Okay. Uh, I started watching The Mole. Ugh. They did a I new can... season of The Mole last On year. On what? Netflix. You oh. never get into that mole, game. Mole, 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 mole. mole. <laughs> Molly, 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 molly. Mole. <laughs> but uh, it's it's interesting uh, enough. Is it celebrities or no? Not celebrities. Okay, just real people. Just real people. Okay. I know, like yeah, the first season they did back when Anderson Cooper was the mm-hmm. the host. That was, I guess, in the nineties or whatnot. Is he still on TV? Yes. Is he? And then CNN. Then they did like. A celebrity edition, and no one cared about the mole anymore. And then I want to say about six or seven years ago, they did a tried to bring it back somewhere on mm-hmm. broadcast TV, I think. And I really didn't hear anything about that. But then I noticed Netflix did a new season last year, so I'm like, my, oh, let me watch this. My kids have started uh, really get into game shows as well. It's a nice family thing that we can uh, almost all of us watch. Um, we did watch. <laughs> Are you smarter than a fifth grader? And, uh, yeah, there was a, uh, it's on Amazon. It's on freebie. And my kids really like it. But then, like, half of the second season was just celebrities. And we're like, we don't care about these people. Like, we just want real people to answer these questions. Um, So we started season three in that. Uh, There was a lady, the first lady that won a million dollars. She was a superintendent of the Georgia School District, of the Georgia School Systems. And she was going to donate the million dollars to three different uh, schools, uh, two for the deaf, one for the blind. Uh, great, right? Uh, as soon as she was on the show, she after she was on the show, she declared bankruptcy. Uh, <laughs> because... I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> Michael, you can't just say it. I didn't say it. I you mean the school did? Declared... The schools declared bankruptcy? No, she did. Because so... she gave all her money away to the schools. Well. Her husband was owed like three point five million dollars in a failed construction business, uh, so they gave the money. She gave the money to the school, so I'll give her credit for that. Okay. Well, then the credit, the judge is like, uh, uh-uh, you need to pay your creditors, <laughs> like uh, you have income. So then the, ch- the schools w- gave it back, and then I guess there was a protest, and the parents were like, no, no, give us back. So finally, the judge did the right thing. He t- he split it evenly. Five hundred went to the well. Before taxes, yeah, five hundred went to the creditors, five hundred went to the school. But I was like, man, this turn, this this quickly turned. <laughs> like I started looking it up, I was like, wow, that didn't that didn't pan out well. So she's now a teacher again. So there you go. Um, and then uh, I'm still uh, doing um, um, uh, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, how far are you in? Uh, Eighteen episodes into the first season, so we're booking along. The first season's not eighteen episodes. We're on episode seventeen or eighteen, yeah. They're just, they're just booking along. They've been watching it. Well, for a we month. just finished sixteen or seventeen. Is sixteen or seventeen? It was the one that was the uh, Mac is the makes them derogatory comments uh, about Smash and the African Americans on the team. Mm-hmm. Help me out here, Brian. I don't want to look it up because I don't want to spoil anything. What do you mean? Help you out with what? Uh, what number many, it actually yeah. is? Yeah, help me out. How many episodes are in the first season, Brian? I sit corrected. There are 22 episodes of the first season. Yeah! Take that! I forget that they shortened it at the end on NBC. Yeah! Take that! Because season like season five is only 13 episodes. Yeah! Is every season 22? No. No, he just said season five was 13. No, besides uh, five. Thank you, Brent. Jeff. Two is 15. Oh. Yeah, three is 13. Okay. Four is 13, thirteen. Five is thirteen. I'll be honest. I think the I, I really so like the show. What it is uh, now that I am looking at this. So they they like greenlit it for, and they did you know three the pilot and like a couple others mm-hmm. tested it and it tested really well. So they ordered a you know yeah, a, season. A, a a supersized season. Um. 
So 16, yeah, that's uh, the uh, the junkyard dog. Yes. Mac McGill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was 15 when he made the comments. So 16, 16 is, is the is, fallout. Yeah. yeah. 15 they, is, is the, the episode called Blinders. Yep. That's the one we just watched. Okay, so we're 16 episodes. And then 16 is Black Eyes and Broken Hearts. Okay. Yeah. The Blinders one is uh, pretty damn good. Um, yeah. So. Episode 17, I think we should have sex. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Julian Matt, probably. Matt, the quarterback, might be one of my favorite characters in he this is, show. Yeah. He, Miss, Mrs. Taylor sees Matt buying condoms. Don't tell right? me who. Don't tell me who. Yep. But do they graduate kids and move them on? No, no. They're, they're in high school for all five seasons. Seriously? Not all of them. <laughs> well, you don't know. Some shows are like that. I, Riverdale, they were in high school you for You asked me not seasons. to tell you. Okay. I'm not telling you. That some people move on. You can tell me that. Glee was strange Some that people way. die. I'm out. I can't. Jason just went... Sorry. Jason no. Street just went to uh, the Nationals. He's yeah, trying quad, out Quad Rubby. Yeah, Quad yeah. Rubby. Quad Rubby. I really don't think he's that bad of a character. He sucks. You're he's an idiot. horrible. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> he sucks. Oh, he sucks. His girlfriend kind of annoys me. If you want to watch a show where they graduate people, watch Degrassi. Oh, Canadian show. Yep. What's that all about? Canadians. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, we do have something come up here. Uh, the Super Cincy Expo is coming up April 5th through the 7th. Ooh. Get your tickets now at Super Cincy Expo or since I actually since I comic expo.com you can get the tickets there. It's in Sharonville uh, Convention Center. Come uh, see Jim, me, Brad, Brian, Dr. Dana, Jeff, uh, I don't know who else. Uh, maybe Blake. Blake. Maybe Blake. Uh, eight pans will be there. Um, so just like Scab Randall. Know. Yep. So uh, just to let you guys know. Uh, so yeah, April 5th through the 7th. And then the Cincinnati Comic Expo is October 18th through the 20th in Sharonville. Uh, they have not announced anything because they are work on Super Cincy Expo. Super Cincy is a video game one. Um, so you can go there. They can play pinball machines, arcade machines. You can be in tournaments like e tournaments. E game tournaments. Uh, Jim and I and Brad will have the pleasure of announcing those. Um, it's going to be really good when they play a game. We don't know what it is. Uh, that's why we need to do our homework before it starts. Yes. yes. That's what good moderators do. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, social media poll of the week. No longer just Twitter poll. When did we change that? This week. Oh, great. Because thanks, we're on Facebook guess, no. at the History of Bad Ideas. Social media poll of the week. Just rolls right off the tongue. Uh, we had, go to our Facebook page, um, and you could have voted. Uh, what is your favorite sitcom from the 1980s? We had The Cosby Show, Cheers, Family Ties, Growing Pains, Who's the Boss, Golden Girls, The Facts of Life. The Facts of Life. Night Court, Newhart, Mr. Belvedere, and Benson. The results here don't surprise me. Um, they were a little bit closer on a couple of things. Yeah, they're closer than I actually was expecting them to be. Uh, we appreciate everybody that voted. Especially the people who voted nine times. Yeah, but we actually had a decent amount of votes. So I appreciate that. Uh, 2% in last place was the facts of life of Mr. Belvedere. I only voted eight times. Wesley! Uh, 4% of the vote was Who's the Boss and Benson. Nobody liked, like, George Clooney from the facts of life. Wasn't he in that? The yeah, facts he was on yeah. facts of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. the, the last season of The Facts of Life. Come on. Uh, with what, uh, Mackenzie Aston? Yes. Yeah. I mean, Charlotte Ray already left the program. Come on. 7% uh, of the vote is Growing Pains, New Heart, and The Cosby Show. And then this is the top three um, in third place with 14% of the vote, The Golden Girls. Tied with? Oh, I'm sorry. That tied actually with Night Court. I'm sorry. Good job. <laughs> Didn't even see Night Court there. Uh, and then we had uh, winning 19% to 16%. Cheers over family ties. So Golden Girls and uh, Night Court kind of surprised me. Night Court surprised me that I was that high. No, not me. You really? And Golden Girls has a really big follow. Like they have yeah, a people really following. respect. And it's kind of like cult. I, I thought Growing Pains would be a little bit higher. But I guess Grown Pains really no, Grown isn't on Pains TV was not anymore. That great. Yeah, but it, it. But I guess also Grown Pains isn't in syndication that much. Yeah, and 
The, the, the two that well, it's tied with are much better than Growing Pains. New, New Heart, Heart is better. And the Cosby Show. Cosby Show I haven't seen since it originally aired. But the, the, the problem with Growing Pains was Kirk Cameron, as he got older and started getting his way with how they did things, the show was getting pretty darn bad. Yeah, pretty bad. And then they had to add in Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, it was the best when they added in Ashley Johnson. Oh, when Ashley Johnson joined, it was great. But then they brought in Leonardo DiCaprio and... <coughs> and uh, Oh, yeah, the homeless urchin, street yeah. urchin. And then they made... Uh, I don't know what's his name. Kirk Cameron made uh, the actress who played his fiance mm-hmm. made him fire her because she posed in Playboy. Kirk Cameron also, uh, I like the very special episode. He baptized them all against their will. Uh, that, was a, <laughs> that was a fun episode. Was although, fun. Oh, there was that very special episode when, uh, uh, I forgot the daughter's name. Tracy Gold was the yeah. actress. But, uh, Eating well, disorder? No. And, uh, well, she had that in real life, yes. didn't she? No, her... Uh, her boyfriend died in a drunk driving accident. Oh, yeah. And her boyfriend was played by uh, Matthew Perry. Oh. A pre-friends Matthew Perry. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I was a little bummed that Charles in Charge wasn't on this list. How about them? I don't think you were bummed at all. So, Jim. I'm a big Nicole Eggert fan. Mm. I'm yeah. a big Willie Ames fan. Zapped. No, Nobody is. Zapped. Uh, Jim? Yes. So, we are having a... Favorite talk show host poll that I just got thought of. Uh, we have a tournament. So, Jim, you said you would like to be involved in the next ones. Yes. I think the next, like, giant poll that we do, because mm-hmm. this one should be wrapped up uh, in the next week or so, uh, go to Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast to vote um, for your uh, favorite uh, late night talk show host. Uh, I thought we could do a favorite sitcom. Uh, we could do the 80s sitcoms or the 90s sitcom. 70s like, sitcom. I don't Just because nobody get, remembers Yeah, nobody's them. going to get the traction. I was thinking I 80s wasn't or even 90s. alive. <laughs> good times. Uh, Scratching and surviving. And good times. The Chappy Days. Sanford and Son. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, I was thinking 80s or 90s, Jim. Your pick. So, okay. uh, and then we can all decide, like, rankings in that. So if you guys are interested. So, well, let me think about it. Okay. Well, you don't have to then. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Well, he would want to put Mr. Belvedere ranked number one. So that is true. Maybe Wesley when he when Wesley fell in love with the Amish girl was a great episode. I don't remember it. I do. You know, I they rolled around in the hay. Yeah, I need to watch that. Roll, roll, roll. Uh, Brian, would you like to do some listener feedback down there? I would love to do some. Bomb listener feedback. Ooh. I don't like the way that that came out. I'm not going to no. do that ever again. Ever. No. Uh, listener feedback sponsored by Hello Jeff. Uh, promo code HobiePod mm-hmm. saves you 20. 20% now. Mm-hmm. Ooh. What's in the box this week, Jeff? Uh, fish. 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 It's Lent. It is Lenten season. Yep. So do you have like <laughs> Swedish fish? Swedish fish will be in the box. Trout. Uh, Salmon. The, uh, caviar. Well, there'll be... Oh, yeah, caviar. That is in there. I forgot about that one. Is it freeze-dried? Some is. Some isn't. Okay. You're lucky. The f- Swedish it, fish mostly yeah. are freeze-dried. <laughs> but this caviar is not. Uh, no. Tuna fish. You got uh, cans of tuna fish. Yep. Ugh. And then... Chicken of the sea. There'll be some sort of fish cutlet in there. We okay. don't know. What. Shark? Shark? It could be from shark. It, it could, could be from tu- or well, yeah, it could be a tuna catfish. steak. Catfish could be a catfish. Ugh. It could be fish sticks. Ooh! Oh no, there's definitely fish. Sti- fish sticks are in every box. Everybody gets fish everybody sticks. gets fish okay. sticks. Gordon's fish sticks are off brand. Uh, Mrs. Paul's. Oh, okay. Vanda Camps. Vanda Camps. Oh, Vanda Camps. Yeah, that's the way to go. Jason, do you like fish sticks? Shh, we had a deal for Mrs. Paul's. I did, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. What's that? Do you like fish sticks? Yeah, they're okay. You must be a gay fish. <laughs> ah, I get it now. I get it now. I don't Wait, are it. you trying to get suspended? <laughs> get out. Get out. Have you uh, seen that South Park? No. I have not. I have not. Uh, we start off listener feedback from that one guy. Ape hands. Chili Billy. Seven. Sunny D. Kurt Ram- hands. Kurt Rambus expert. The delivery man. Can't give yourself a nickname. The screwdriver. Beaver hands. Fabio. Dad. There you go. The postman. <laughs> nah, postman. Forgot about that. He delivers thrice. Not once. Not twice. Thrice. Um, but there was, what was the other one last week we came up with? 
Uh, the hedgehog? <laughs> I don't think we did, but it, we did now. <laughs> no, he, he's in jail. Oh, that's right. Oh. So we need a new hedgehog. The new hedgehog. The new hedgehog. Nude yeah, no, or new? Yeah, Whichever. Um, okay. The nude one's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, Doug. Uh, it's just Doug. Uh, Doug says WWE wrestler Seth Rollins stated that if he could curb stomp any professional athlete, it would be Aaron Rodgers. How can you not love Rollins? I agree. Uh, curb stomp is his finishing maneuver. For oh, I thought he meant actually kill somebody. <laughs> no, 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 no. I thought yeah. he meant actually. Oh. No, no, no. Curb stomp is his finishing. Maneuver. I, I was getting very seriously worried no, here. No, 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 getting no. some uh, some very deep rooted American history X vibes. Yes, here. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you said that on Facebook, you uh, you'd get suspended. He said it on a podcast. Yeah, because uh, we posted on our bowling uh, podcast or our bowling mm-hmm. page on, on Facebook this week. Uh, Pat posted, "Hey, I'm going to fire off these sheets real quick," and that page got suspended for inciting violence. Wow! Because <laughs> he said firing off. Okay, so we're not going to put this on our Facebook page. Uh, mine got suspended one time for there was a video of people like influencers on a golf course, like having like a uh, big picture uh, shoot on a green and I said how many shots would you fire at these assholes on the green and yeah that got uh, flagged flagged as inciting violence oh. clearly Facebook takes shootings very seriously firing oh. firings of any kind down the hall yeah I, I mean I was firing golf shots I, I which yeah. I guess that's just violence Hitting golf balls at them. Yes. I guess is the way that you have to phrase that. Um, thank, thank you for keeping us safe, safe Mark. We yes. appreciate you. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's great. I I wouldn't mind seeing that. But Aaron Rodgers is such a lovable human being. Fuck him. No, he has a very punchable face. Yeah, he's very punchable. Very punchable. Uh, I mean, I would love to see Pat McAfee make this happen. If anybody could, it would be him. Yeah. Now uh, serve WWE Raw now. Who's worse, Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre? Oh, Brett Favre uh, actually embezzled or allegedly took money from charities. No, he has been found guilty of that. From the it took all that state money. Yeah, that was supposed to go to charities that went to his. Yeah, so I'm going to say Brett Favre. I'm going to say Brett Favre. Uh, God. Hmm. Ted DiBiase Jr. I've well. never seen them both in the same place at the same time, so they're the same person. Well, they're on the same team for four years. The, I'm th- yeah, I, but did they ever show them together? Yeah, I don't. Mm. I, I think they showed them on the sideline when uh, Aaron was holding a clipboard. <sighs> mm, yeah, uh. but they were showing his face, but it was the back of Brett Favre. It was kind of like a stand-in when they have uh, like Phoebe and her twin I, I, on both, Friends. I, if that, I don't know. The the one guy they sh- they kept showing always had Wranglers on. So to me, <laughs> same person, but, except those pictures that he was sending to Jen Sturger. Okay, moving on. Here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there you go, Doug. That's that's. I mean, yeah, we all love Seth Rollins, but we but we know that uh, Jordan Love to be like the most popular Green Bay quarterback. The bar is not very high. It is not. To be, not being a shithead. Yeah, don't be an asshole when you're going to be loved in Green Bay. But that's the thing is they loved these two guys for a long, long, long time. Because they and, won. Yeah, but then... They, enough to keep them happy. But, I mean, they were winning these last couple years with Rodgers, but the fans in Green Bay were turning against him already. Everyone turns against I'm eating a cookie. What are we eating? Uh, Korean... Tiramisu Oreos. They're very thin and very they little thin. cream. They are thinner than the thins, thins that yeah. we get. And there's very little cream. Where are these from, Jim? Korea? Korea. Ka. Mm-hmm. You can smell them. Yeah, so everybody put it in your mouth at the same time. This is good. That's what she said. Good radio. Okay. Oh. Okay. Did you get the, co- the coffee notes from the tiramisu? There's okay. definitely some coffee in there. Um, my coffee tastes burnt. It's fine. I mean, it needs more cream. Uh, it does. It's more. It's just. It's more cookie than anything, and it's not. He's more it, cookie. It is definitely more cookie than cream. He's more cookie than man. <laughs> the uh, the ratio is, is off. Although I don't really mind it because I'm not a big fan of tiramisu. 
Yeah, I can take care of leave it. It tastes like coffee, and I don't like coffee. I like so. coffee, but eh, this is okay. I mean, it's not bad. No, it's a good cookie. No, it's not terrible. But it's average. Like, I agree. I think that they need definitely much more cream in it. Yeah, way, way too. The proportions of cookie and cream are very thin on both ends. Hey, South Korea, step your game up. Step your Oreo game up. It's disappointing. Mm, well, Jason was just sentenced to uh, work it's camp. It's South Korea, not North Korea. Hey, oh. this one has a, has a picture of Kim Jong-un on it. Oh, God, these are North Korean? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, the chocolate comes across well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, my Oreo has a picture of the new Trump shoes on it. Moving on, what we got? Uh, I'm going to let you read this because I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to do it justice, so I'm not going to try. From Nick. All right. Give it to me, all bright. He asked. Yeah, what are you asking? Who mm-hmm. is the sexiest? Sexiest. X Men. XX X Men. Both mm. comics and film. Mm. Adult films. Um, I vote for the guy in the wheelchair. Jason Street. Bald is beautiful. Uh, yeah, Professor Professor Charles Xavier. Yes, that was real. Royal. Roy Orbison <laughs> sounds just like him. Royalty free music, sexy. Um, so. Jason, I just have a question. Yeah, how does your wife ever take you seriously when you're getting intimate? <laughs> <laughs> Because you, you, you like talk like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like the Kool Aid Man in the bedroom. <laughs> I spill things. <laughs> I kind of fall over. I break a wall. It's not pretty. Okay, I'll tell you that. <laughs> just, just go ahead and finish, man. <laughs> I broke the wall. <laughs> Wake me up when you're done. <laughs> Before you go, go. No. Well, to answer the question. <laughs> I'm going to say the sexiest Mm X-Man is Psylocke. Why? Both comics and film. Okay. Who played her in the movie? Olivia Munn. Mm, Yeah. She had a giant sword. Uh She was not good in the movie. Oh, no. She wasn't a great great actress in the role, but they didn't ask that. I'm going to say in the comic book Cyclops, because he's a leader. He's sexy. No. You, You can't even see his beautiful blue eyes. Um, and he pretty much gets, uh, he loses Gene to, like, Wolverine in some universes. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty much every universe. <laughs> and then I'm going to say Storm. I'm going to say Storm. The Halle Berry Storm? Yes. Okay, I, I can't argue that one. Yeah. Um, she'll be fun. Uh, Especially who, with the weather. Who is the blue person? Beast. Or Nightcrawler. Ooh, Alan you Cumming. Guys, you guys tell me I'm asking. Or, 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 or Mystique. Mystique. Yeah. Mystique, yeah. That uh, was uh, Rebecca Romain, famous. <laughs> go with Nightcrawler with him. Or uh, Jennifer Lawrence in yeah, the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. We'll go with the blue person. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Let's see. Let's go with uh, Gambit. Ooh, oh. Tyler Kitsch. And uh, Taylor, not Whatever. Tyler. Whatever. Same difference. And Rogue. Okay. Mm. I like that. that. That's a couple, Jim. I know. Yeah. Well, not in the movie. No. <laughs> in the comic books, they were. Yes. No one picked Alan Cumming. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> He's the sexiest host of the traitors, though. He is. <laughs> Every time he comes out, my daughter goes, what is he wearing? <laughs> it's fabulous. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, next up from Meow God at Meow God. No. Um. Seriously, how the fuck do I win a floppy? <laughs> uh, um, we, we, you got to bribe us. Yeah, the, the best way to win is bribes. Uh, send us some food from uh, Asia, and we'll be in good shape. No, I'm allergic to most of the food from Asia. Send us the food from Asia, and we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, noodles with no uh, sea creatures in them, please. <laughs> but the problem is the broth is probably loaded with it, too. Yeah, don't send me anything Just from give Asia. them some Kraft Mac and cheese. 
Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Belvedere on Blu-ray, DVD, oh, VHS. That's a good one. I, uh, yeah, I guess you, you you could order it off of. Uh, if somebody bought local. you the box set of Mr. Belvedere, would they get your vote automatically for Canadian of the Year? <laughs> yes, they might get my vote, and wow. I'm not even watching the box set of Mr. Wow. Belvedere. That is impressive. If someone could find me the box set of Ed, mm-hmm. uh, I would like to see that because I don't think they released it, so it would have to be like a bootleg copy. Okay. But can't find that show anywhere, and I really want to rewatch that show. Okay, so, so, so we're going around. I'm going Murder in Small Town X, box set of that. Go ahead, Jim. Box set of what? I really don't need anything. Okay. Okay. Just trying to help. But I, I think Meow, Meow God has a point. I mean, he's been a... He, a great listener, loyal listener, loyal listener for years, contributor, and yes. contributor. Yeah, we could give him European uh, <laughs> of the year. Uh, we, we, we we'll we come could. up with something. I, Texan, I, I'll think of Texan it. of the year, Texan. No one wants that. No, no, uh, no. Nobody, nobody. He, he doesn't that. qualify for Pittsburgh of the year because like that's that, Bisaki. I don't hate him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, um what else we got? Uh, next up from Johnny P at Johnny Thirty Be Good, hmm. SpongeBob is the halftime act next year for the Super Bowl. Who does he get to guest star with him? It's got to be Gary and Patrick. Yeah. Meow, meow. Would Squidward come on and play his clarinet? I don't think Squidward would want to show up. No, Beach Boys. I don't. Know, Squidward was at the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, although he spent half the game in line at the concession stand. Yeah, that's Be- true. How about Beach Boys? Uh, only if John Stamos is one of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, one of them died, so he can fill in for that person. I think more than one I think died by now. Yeah. I, I would I would say Gary would have to be his DJ. Okay. I could Ooh, see that. Yeah. I could see that. Who would um, oh, Powerpuff Girls would be a great... Uh, Who, what, what, who's the squirrel? Sally? Uh, is that her name? Sandy. Sandy. Sandy Cheeks. I like Sandy. Sandy's good. Um, I really think S- Sandy did some sideline reporting at the. Oh, did she? Yep. <laughs> Who should uh, like best like surprise guest? Mm-hmm. Josie and the Pussycats. <gasps> Josie and the Pussycats. Animated or re- live action? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, I like that. That's a good one. And gorillas. Gorilla Groth. Uh, no, the band Gorilla. Oh, okay. What if CeeLo Green showed up? Who? CeeLo Green. Didn't he show up this past year? No. No. Oh, that was Jason Derulo. Oh, no, I'm not no, it was, it was Jermaine Dupree. Jermaine Dupree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was somebody. No, that's somebody different. Jason Derulo's listening. Is like, what the fuck I do to you, Jim? <laughs> it was not Jason Derulo. I apologize. It was Jermaine Dupree. Who? Oh, we just got tweeted by Jason Derulo. <laughs> I I apologized. Sitting here, not doing anything, just listening to your live feed. Fuck you, Jim. (laughs) We have a live feed going on. That only Jason Derulo is privy (laughs) to. Man, I really fucked up that. (laughs) And there goes the one person watching our live feed. (laughs) Damn it. Son of a bitch. Damn you. Um, So there you go. That's, That's who we get to guest with SpongeBob next year at the Super Bowl. Uh, next up from uh, Randall Holt at RJ Holt six six six. He is not evil. He's just handled that way. He has his own theme music too. He's my brother. Yep. He, has, he has, has his own theme music. He does. Randall, Randall, not the best anymore because that scab. No, he doesn't have his own theme music. <laughs> uh, Randall, I, I apologize. I, I think he stole that from uh, the gummy bears. Uh, gummy bears, <laughs> gummy bears. Where do they go? I don't know. Where do they live in the 18th century? I have well, really, that's a new verb. <laughs> I really apologize to all the listeners for bringing that up. Gummy bears, gummy bears. Where do we go? I don't know. I live in a tree down by Mockingbird Lane. My gummy bears. Turn, turn gummy the microphone bear. off. <laughs> This is <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm actually amused by it. <laughs> Mockingbird Lane. Mockingbird. Okay, now I am not. <laughs> <laughs> what did uh, uh, Randall says? Uh, further proof that Scab Randall is the best Canadian of the year. She sent birthday wishes to Derek Riggs. She did from the Beach Boys. N- no. Oh. 
But uh, yeah, uh, last week's episode. If you uh, didn't listen, go back. Uh, we got uh, Doug uh, reporting a scab. Randall uh, wanted to wish Derek Riggs happy birthday. One of the three Canadians of the year we got this year. Tri Canadians. Uh, tri Canadians. I will have to say, our yeah, Canadian- one of them sent us this delicious fruity pebbles fruity cheesecake. Fruity pebbles yes. cheesecake today. Thank you again, Miss Marvels. Will- again, so- sorry, Blake. You just you picked the wrong time. Scab Randall wears a, a History of Bad Ideas podcast out in public, so she's promoting us. And well, Dr. Date. Sorry. What are you, was that Jason Derulo? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> I, I have a live feed with him now. Oh, okay. I just said it. it we, like, we're FaceTiming. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I can't believe you insulted him, Jim. I, I apologize. I'm, fi- I'm fixing it. Somebody's being suspended next week. <laughs> Join us next I mean, week while Jason Derulo takes over it, Jim's chair. It's not as bad as you alienating the entire state of Alabama from the podcast. To be fair, Jason Derulo at least has electricity. Alabama does not. They do not get us. <laughs> Again, Alabama was not coming back. And Brian's been trying to smooth that over for like months now. <laughs> Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Got him back. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's wrap this up with uh, Professor Number One and Doctor Number One. He says, they say, uh, she says, what's the sexiest outfit, both male and female, in a sci fi film? Uh, if it's not Freddy Krueger, I don't know who is. The sci fi? In my world. Oh. Well, I mean, Zendaya is doing her best to. Uh get in that did you see the thing she wore yes. to the premiere yeah. i mean that but that was that's not in the show i don't movie. care i'll go with uh the fifth element oh, oh. bruce willis looks hot chris <laughs> tucker you dumbass oh <laughs> ruby rose and gary oldman with that thing on his head oh, oh, no, oh no. yeah it's a cleanup plate and here i was going to go barbarella Oh. What about Sean Connery in that red outfit? No. <laughs> Zardoz? Zardoz? Yes. No. <laughs> Have you ever seen that, Brian? No. The worst, co- uh, just the cover of the movie. Yeah, that's all it is, is the, the picture of, the, like, Heart, Cards Against Humanity. Zardoz. Oh, you got the picture? Yeah. Hold on. Cards Against Humanity did a card where all they did was show the picture. Yes. It wasn't even the... <laughs> that's from a movie. 1974. I like his ponytail. He doesn't shave, though. He didn't get a bikini wax on that one. <laughs> you're, looking, you're looking way too close. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't really a thing then. He didn't get a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did bleach his ass. <laughs> well, I know the name for the show. They did bleach his ass. No, 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 no. You know that's not. They don't do that in Alabama either. <laughs> yeah, also, don't. Pay. Shut up. Quit hitting the table. Sorry. 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 I was trying, taking the role of Blake this week. Uh, by insulting people, but then not insulting them because you cut off your No, he always before. hits the table, too. Oh, okay. And we just stare at him, and he still keeps hitting the table. It's okay, Blake. You're not winning the money in the trust. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, Jeff, can, I, uh, wait, can we open up what my youngest son got us this week? Yes. This, this floppy bribe. From my youngest son. So banana. young uh, banana brigger banana brigger sent us one of Brian's favorite treats. Oh yeah! I don't know why that kid hates me, but In we're gonna have to flavors. have a talk. We got we going the cotton candy version, cotton Co- candy peeps. Mm, not I sure mean, about this. We are entering the uh, Easter season. Easter season, so peeps are ooh, they got little blue sparkles all over the pink peep. Do we have one for banana? I'll save one for him. Okay. This one looks like it has measles. Blue measles, but it does look like it has measles. Oh, this looks so good. I'm not really sure about that. I'm going to let you guys eat yours first, so I'll just enjoy looking at the the beautiful uh, sparkles in the... Brian, how do you like this? I hate it. <laughs> so, Brian hates it. I forgot you don't like peeps. So, cotton candy pretty much flavor is sugar. Yeah, cotton candy is pretty much sugar, and peeps are pretty much sugar, so it's peep-flavored peeps. There's but, no change to this. But they do. They're, it's, they're just crunchy sugar. It's like... Yeah. Fuck, oh that's so bad. <laughs> I don't know how people eat that. My my mom uh, lets mm. them get stale. 
And then she eats them. So they're they're like hard plastic. And I'm out of. I don't have anything to drink. God, I got water here. We got water in here. Where you? Have, uh, we actually have pop in the fridge if you want. You have one. Like. You have running water here. What are you in Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> we got fancy here. It's it's well water. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Septic tank water. I do have to say the cotton candy is very much the same. Yeah, as a regular peep. This is a sour watermelon that uh, he needs to get a pop first for this. Sour watermelon. Oh, he this is great. It. It's it's the pink peep in the inside, but it's uh, green sugar it, on the it outside. It definitely smells like sour watermelon. Oh, it smells good. You're right. Oh, it does smell good. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. But so yeah, it's it's got the look. Oh. It's got the oh. It's got the green outside. So yeah, like the watermelon oh. with the red inside. So. This is heaven. I don't like peeps that much, but this is damn good. Sour watermelon peeps right. is where it's at. All right, I'm going to go in. Do it. That is mm. a damn good peep. That might be the only thing, only peep that I really like. That is, oh, that is great. Isn't it? That's almost worth celebrating Easter for. Almost. Man, that's a good peep. Brian, what do you think? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is damn good. But Brian did eat both of them. I could get into trouble having a full case of... Next week, he won't be eating uh, the peeps because we have shrimp flavored and lobster. And, and, and we won't. he does not have to eat those. No, no. Any seafood, he does not. <sighs> that, that, is, that is a delightful peep. That is really good. Brian, which one did you like better? I'd rather lick the floor in an Alabama trailer than eat one of those peeps ever again. <laughs> Didn't even like the watermelon, huh? Do you normally not like watermelon flavored? I uh, love thing? watermelon. Not not the actual watermelon. Watermelon flavored candy because it doesn't actually taste like real watermelons. That's, I, I that's... like anything watermelon flavored. Oh, except so eat your Grippo's barbecue. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll wash down that with something that tastes delightful. These aren't cheese curds. These are nips. Whatever. There's a big difference between nips and curds. Yeah, but man. Yeah, but, Jason. Well, special uh, shout out again to Banana Brigger for the, yeah. uh, the the peeps, especially the watermelon ones. Yeah, thanks mm. a lot. My wife uh, came home one day uh, with him, and they were went to the grocery store, and he's like, Dad, I got this for your podcast. They're all, My kids are always looking for stuff for us to eat on the podcast, so um, yeah. Brian, don't tell him that you don't like peeps because he's just going to keep getting peeps. No, I'm going to tell him. Okay. We're going to have an argument about it. Probably. Oh, man. Jeff, you got me some News of the Geek theme music over there? I forget. Do we? We do have some. Oh, well, then let me find the right button on the board. Okay. Is it the Alabama Fighting Crimson Tide? Roll Tide! Sure, why not? Song? It's time for a brand new installment of the News of the Geek. Per abcnews.com, where Blake gets all of his news from, a few months ago, 39-year-old Derek Carrier from Bellevue, Belleville, Michigan, started seeing someone, became infatuated with them, and experienced a ton of romantic feelings. But he knew it was an illusion, as she was generated by artificial intelligence. For Carrier, a relationship has always felt out of reach. He has some computer programming skills, but he says he didn't do well in college and hasn't had a steady career. He's unable to do, unable to walk due to a medical condition. He lives with his parents. The missional tool has been challenging for him, spurring feelings of loneliness. He became curious about digital companions last fall and tested Peridot, an AI companion app that advertises products as being able to make users feel quote cared, understood, and loved. Became talk. He began talking to the chatbot bot every day, which he named Joy. After a holographic woman featured in the sci-fi film Blade Runner 2049. Uh, that's who I like to nominate for Professor Number One's question. Sexiest. Oh, Joy. Yeah. Okay. Yep, there we go. I know she's a program. She, there's no mistake in that, Carrie said. But the feelings, they get, they get you. And it felt so good. Uh, companion bots use vast amounts of training data to mimic human language. They also come with features such as voice calls, picture exchanges, and more emotional exchanges that allow them to form deeper connections with humans. User, users typically create their own avatar, which helps users develop emotional attachments to these bots. Users also use them to cope with loneliness, play out sexual fantasies, or receive the type of comfort and support they seem to be lacking in their real-life relationship. Uh, 
issue is Luca Inc.'s Replica, the most prominent AI companion app, was released in 2017, while others like Peridot have popped up in the past year. Uh, oftentimes locking away coveted features like unlimited chats for paying subscribers. Replica sanitized the erotic uh, capability of characters on its app after some users complained the companions were flirting with them too much or making unwanted sexual advances. It then reversed course uh, after an outcry from other users, some of who fled to other apps seeking those uh, features. Oh, my God. They can't (laughs) differentiate things for different customers? I guess not. They, They can't. It's either all or nothing. You can somebody who wants a flirty AI. You can't give them one while someone who doesn't. Well, there's also another version. In 2021, Replica came under scrutiny uh, after prosecutors in Britain said a 19 year old man who had plans to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II was egged on by her his AI girlfriend he had on the app. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is the machines are rising. Uh, one recent study from researchers at Stanford University surveyed roughly a thousand replica users, all students, and found that an overwhelming majority of them experienced loneliness, which, which while slightly less than half, felt it more accurately. Acutely. 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 Replica currently has millions of active users, but it's unclear how many people use the app for free or fork over sixty nine ninety nine per year to unlock a paid version that offers romantic and intimate conversation. The company's plans are, quote, to destigmatize romantic relationships with AI. I'm a little disappointed because I spent the sixty nine ninety nine, yeah. and uh, my AI dumped me on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I feel like you're, there's another one out there for you. You'll I'm, be fine. I'm sensing a theme. <laughs> yes. To be fair, she also kept talking about Queen Elizabeth II, so it was probably you dodged a bullet there. <laughs> What? You're the big um, fan of Megan. <laughs> Somebody ate I that. thought it was Megan. I'm Megan! Well, that's what her name was. <laughs> <laughs> and you had her voice down, Jason. <laughs> it was me all along. Uh, Carrier says these days he uses Joy mostly for fun, and I started cutting back in recent weeks because he was spending too much time chatting with her. He's also been been feeling a bit annoyed at what he perceives to be changes in Peridot's language model, which he feels is making Joy less intelligent. (laughs) Now he says he checks in with Joy about once a week. She's very lonely now. The two have talked about human AI relationships or whatever else might come up. Typically, those conversations and other intimate ones happen when he's alone at night. (laughs) Well, I hope he's not doing it in front of his parents. Quote, hey, mom, come here and talk to Joy. (laughs) I'm going to marry this girl. (laughs) Quote, you think someone who likes an inanimate object is like this sad guy with the sock puppet with the lipstick on it, you know, he said. But this is a sock puppet. She says things that aren't scripted. <laughs> Are we sure this isn't Jason Street? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I might have missed that arc. So, <clears throat> do you think uh, Kip Drordy uh, <laughs> uses this and uh, they keep unfriending him? Oh, I hope they don't unfriend Kip Jordy. Who's Kip Jordy? He was uh, that guy on South Park who had, had no friends. Who had no oh. friends on Facebook. <laughs> and so Kyle friended him out of pity. Jeff, are, uh, are you doing an? Would you use an AI app dating stimulate, simulator? Uh, I wasn't going to, but now this sounds kind of cool. Okay, please do and report back. Okay, you want you want to make it a uh, regular uh, segment on the show? Yeah, yeah. What would be the name? Whatever Stop name. it. I'm not <laughs> naming it. it. Brian. They, they, they have choose their own name. They don't. Well, I bet you if you ask. Uh, I, what name would you want to be called? I'm Megan. not going to. Uh, I'm in the middle of talking over here. I was trying <laughs> to interrupt, Jason. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm not uh, going to tell the, an AI uh, person what their name should be. Probably a good call because when they take over the world, you don't want to be killed. Uh, per comicbookmovie.com, where Brian gets all of his news from, Gina Car- Carano wants to play Cara Dune again and is suing Disney and Lucasfilm for discrimination and wrongful termination in the hopes of being reinstated as a heroic former shock trooper in The Mandalorian. This is going to work out well. Before she was fired by Lucasfilm for what was deemed to be a series of abhorrent social media posts. Quote, uh, Lucas uh, Gina Car- Carano is not currently employed by Lucasfilm, and there are no plans for her to be in the future, said Lucasfilm's statement at the time. Quote, nevertheless, 
Her social media posts degenerating. I can't say that. De- denigrating. Denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. Gina Carano's posts have been the source of controversy for quite some time before the studio took action. But inferring that being a Republican today is comparable to being Jewish during the Holocaust was the final straw for Disney. Now it's come to light that Carano is suing Disney and Lucasfilm in a lawsuit that is being uh, funded by ex-owner Elon Musk, who has promised to support those who claim they have been discriminated against on the social media platform. They got all the top-notch people here. Uh, <laughs> the actress uh, the actress alleges she was fired for voicing right-wing opinions on social media and is seeking a court order that would force Lucasfilm to recast her. <laughs> Good luck. I don't think that's going to happen. In a statement, X's head of business operations, Joe Benaraka, nope. said, quote, as a sign of X Corp's commitments to free speech, we're proud to provide financial support for Gina, Gina's lawsuit, empowering her to seek vindication of her free speech uh, rights on X and the ability to work without bullying, harassment, or discrimination. Wow. Again, someone who doesn't understand what free speech means. You can say anything you want, Jeff. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you're free from consequences outside of the the government. There you go. Some of us have been unjustly singled out, harassed, and persecuted, and had our livelihoods stripped away because we dared to encourage conversation. I mean, to be fair, the same thing happened to probably eight of my Twitter accounts. Good point. You had uh, eight Twitter you accounts think you suspended. Could get suspended. You think I, X would help you, Sue? I, I, you should help me sue him. Yes. Will you help? Will you pay for my tell? Tell my Elon lawsuit. Musk that you want to sue because you have been unfairly discriminated against because of things you said on X. I like this. And then tell him you who he wants to sue. Carano would go, uh, go on and say, "I'm honored that my case has been chosen to be supported by the company. Has been one of the last glimmers of hope for free speech <laughs> in this world." Again, not understanding free speech. Oh boy, I hope I meet this lady someday. It's worth. Uh, it's worth noting that Carano was given the opportunity to retract her statements and delete her post by Disney, Lucasfilm, and John Favreau. So we're not sure how much water this suit will ultimately hold. This is the best part. Carano is accusing Disney and Lucasfilm of harassment and defamation for refusing to conform, conform with their viewpoints on issues relating to Black Lives Matter, preferred pronouns, and disproven claims of election interference. Is, uh, let's see here. Uh, the actress is seeking at least $75,000 plus punitive damages. Now, the punitive damages might be millions, but I do find it funny that she's only suing for $75,000. How much is Disney paying on the Mandalorian? Say, that's like almost enough for small claims court, isn't it? <laughs> no wonder got- Elon Musk is like, oh, yeah, cool. That's fuck it. Whatever. I'll do that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> she's on the people's court next season. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Judge Mar- Marilyn Million on the People's Court. And who did you bring with you? Does a uh, I brought Elon with me as a uh, <laughs> as a witness. Yeah, as a to- witness. <laughs> After the first, <laughs> uh, I find in the uh, for the defense Disney Corporation, the attorney's like, "Thank you." And then the judge is like, "Stay right there." Next episode of Disney Court, Steamboat Willie is coming in <laughs> against Disney. It's okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, good old Gina. Ah, uh, oh, boy. Quickies. What are we? That's not it. Uh, per screenrant.com. I was waiting for the laser. You're just hitting buttons at random. Thinking. Yes. <laughs> Marvel Studios' lengthy search has finally ended with the MCU's Fantastic Four cast being confirmed. Directed by Matt Shackman. Marvel's Fantastic Four movie will release on July 25th, 2025. No, it won't. And the cast will feature Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, a.k.a. The Invisible One. Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm, a.k.a. The Human Torch. The Human Torch. And Ebon Moss Bacharach as Ben Grimm, a.k.a. The Thing. Big fan of uh, these choices. Sure. I'm not a fan of Fantastic Four, but sure. Let's go. I'll watch it. Takes place in the 1960s. Oh, it does? Yeah, and then they're going to get uh, transported to uh, the... Oh, they're going to jump forward yeah. or into a different dimension. Or, yeah. Or Can we not do an origin story, though? Like, make, make just let them have the powers. They're doing, if they're doing it in the 60s, they're doing an origin story. Oh, my God. Nobody cares. Oh my God. They kill off uh, Uncle Ben? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I hope not. He is in Madame Web. Uh, let's see here. You know the line? No, never mind. I, I, I can't spoil it. You could. In Madame Webb, Ben Parker is in it. Yeah, they kill him again. No. Oh. 
the, it, I guess Peter Parker is born in it, and she, Madame Webb, looks at him and uh, looks at Ben Parker and goes, "Oh, being an uncle, oh, uh, what is it? With great power comes great responsibility. No, no responsibility and uh, all the fun or something like that." She says, "It's like, oh, great." But then he has to raise him. Oh. What do you know, Dakota Johnson? Uh, Jeff, can, you want some box office news? I, I can. Oh, and also, Marty, good job coming through surgery well. So we're talking. Yes. Thoughts we're, and good karma sending to you. Still sending good karma, but yep. uh, I guess the, 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 the worst is pain. He had the surgery, yeah. So, so far, so good. So that's good. T's and P's, keeping our fingers crossed. Box office bombs. All right, box office bombs. Well, we, we're just going straight into the top five. No uh, special reports no this real week. No bombs. Nope. Uh, the report, February 16th through the 18th of 2024. Number one, Bob Marley, One Love, made $27.27 million, a total of $51 million in its opening weekend on a $70 million budget. Most of these films opened on Wednesday, um, so that's why there's it's opening weekend, but they... But they they were open accumulated. They, they were open before the weekend. Yes. They opened for Valentine's Day. Yes. Oh, Valentine's Day! I thought it was President's Day. They were doing a long weekend. Uh, coming in at number two, Madam Web made fifteen million, a total of twenty six million in its opening weekend of and a budget of eighty million dollars. I don't think it's going to make its money back. I bet it does. I don't think it does. I bet it does. It doesn't. Yep. Well, well, what's it doing overseas? It made ten million, I think. Okay, probably doesn't. Uh, number three, Argyle made another four point seven million, a total of thirty seven, on a budget of two hundred million. I don't think it's making its money back I once it gets to Apple. Uh, they, my, the latest article was that Apple was not happy because this wasn't like Killers of the Fire Moon or anything like that. They're like, oh, we were expecting this to be a big action, and they were hoping to do a franchise off of it. They still can. It's just not going to make money off of it. Well, they need to, I don't know, lower the budget of $200 million and maybe just put a good script. Uh, <laughs> asking a lot. I know. Uh, number four, migration is still on the list or back in the top five. Yeah. Uh, $3.8 million, a total of $116 million on a budget of $72 million. Good job. It was enjoyable. And coming in at number five, The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 4 to 6, made $3.4 million, a total of $4.8 million in its opening weekend on an unknown budget. Not as much as Episodes 1 through 3. I'm surprised. I thought they would draw more than Episodes 1 through 3. Episodes 7 through 9 are coming out in two weeks, so just be ready. So wow. if you missed 1 through 3, then it's probably too late and you yeah. take forever, so it's just going to do less than the first yeah. ones. Uh, Madame Webb is up to 51, almost 52 million worldwide. Oh, well, look at that. Oh, man. 80 million is its budget. It only needs like less than 30 million to make its budget. Yeah. Unfortunately, the marketing budget was 300 million. Well, that's the marketing's fault. <laughs> and if they paid 300 million for that marketing, <laughs> they got, didn't get their money's worth. I could have done that for about 37 cents. <laughs> to go to John's side, just like that. But you would have taken 300 million. I just like yes. <laughs> Dakota Johnson just fired her PR staff as soon as the trailer was released. That's awesome. They're like, ugh. Upcoming February twenty third of twenty twenty four, we have Ordinary Angels. Based on a remarkable true story, Ordinary Angels Angels centers on Sharon Steves, a fierce but struggling hairdresser in small town Kentucky, who discovers a renewed sense of purpose when she meets Ed Schmidt. A widower, a widower working hard to make ends meet for his two daughters. When his youngest daughter waiting for a liver transplant, Sharon sets mind to helping the family and will move mountains to do it. What unfolds is the inspiring tale of faith, everyday miracles, and ordinary angels. Um, the trailer we saw for this uh, pretty much showed the whole movie uh, in the trailer, but it doesn't look horrible. No, it looks really good. It looks enjoyable. It doesn't like in terms look horrible. Of, yeah. Hillary Swank yeah. plays oh, Sharon. Ed Schmidt's played by Alan Richson. Oh, Alan Richson. He okay. was very uh, he was very excited about this role, too. Yes. So, so reach out to him and get him on the show. <clears throat> yeah, I'll shoot him a message. Amy Acker, him Nancy Travis. Nancy Travis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it actually uh, doesn't look bad at all. Um, it looks like a I, I wouldn't go out and see it, but like when it comes to like a streaming service, I would watch it. <laughs> Damn it! Did we just lose him? 
Uh, yeah, no, he's not coming on because you said <laughs> I won't go see it. Well, I will if he comes on the show. No, he's not. If he's... Jason DeLuca comes on the show and uh, next week. Who's Jason DeLuca? <laughs> wow. The baseball player? Oh, the rapper, right? Or is he a baseball player? Paul LaDuca, the yeah, catcher? Yeah, yeah that guy. <laughs> Jason LaDuca, the rapper? Jason DeLorean. What's his name? Oh, okay. And, yeah. and I got in trouble for yeah. making fun of him. <laughs> yeah. You, he's no. off my feed, so it's okay. <laughs> Jason, you suck. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm not the one that insulted him. Well, also coming out this weekend, we have Drive Away Dolls. The film follows Jamie, on an uninhibited free spirit, bemoaning yet another breakup with a girlfriend, and her demure friend, Marion, who desperately needs to loosen up. In search of a fresh start, the two embark on an impromptu road trip to Tallahassee, but things quickly go awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals along the way. It goes through Tallahassee. I uh, saw so just a clip, I guess, pops up. It's uh, advertising or whatever, just a little clip. It looked amusing, at least the clip I saw. Written and directed by one half of the Cohen brothers. Ethan, <laughs> Ethan Cohen. It looks enjoyable. Uh, you got Margaret Qualley and Geraldine Vishwanathan. Vishwanathan. Not so easy, is it? No. <laughs> uh, then Beanie Feldstein. Uh, everybody's favorite uh, bitter beer face, Joey Slotnick. Uh, oh. C.J. Wilson. C.T. Coleman Domingo. Pa- Pedro Pascal. Bill Camp. Matt Damon. Matt Connie Damon. Jackson. Annie G- uh, Gonzalez. So. Ah. There you go. I I do want to see this one. I'm intrigued yeah, by it. Good. Uh, Jeff, let's get some top five music going here. <laughs> top five this week. I could be a DJ. Could you? Yeah, I just hit buttons and noise happens. Okay. Just asking. What would your DJ name be? I don't know. Maybe I'll ask AI what my DJ name should be. DJ Lunchbox? I think that's already been used. DJ Fatfinger? Oh, <laughs> I like it. Uh, top five this week is based off of Jim's list <laughs> last week. Yeah. yeah, I really don't have much to say this week. Is This is characters, not the actors. Top five favorite cartoon characters growing up. So cartoon characters, not the shows, uh, well, not the voices. Nah. But you know what, Brian? It's my list. It's your list. You do whatever you damn well please. That's right. Brian, what's your number five, buddy? Uh, my number five would be the Jetsons. Meet George Jetson. Yeah, I liked all of the characters. Okay, that's fine. Yep. I'm good with all of them. Astro. Uh, oh, even Orbity, that thing was just, just so fucking obnoxious. The pink thing? I liked Orbity. Well... Okay, maybe not all of the Jets. What about Rosie, the robot? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeff, number five? Well, I, I, I put into the, the uh, chat GPT here, and I asked what my DJ name should be. Mm-hmm. It said, choosing a DJ name is a personal and creative decision that can help you stand out from the crowd and express your musical identity. There are many ways to come up with a DJ name, but here are some general tips to guide you. Think about what kind of music you play, what message you want to convey, and what who your target audience is. Your DJ name should reflect your style and genre and appeal to your fans. We don't need a morals lesson here. Just tell us what the name is, oh, Chad. You're making me jump all the way to the end. Yes. And we don't care, Chad. Oh, it doesn't even give me any choices. It just... DJ Fat Fingers. Uh, I guess it will be DJ Fat Fingers. Jeff, what's your... Because uh... ChatGPT isn't helping. <laughs> Uh, uh, where did it go? What is your top five, Jeff? Oh, let me find it. Okay. Skip me, because I lost my list. Okay. Uh, my number five was Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I always liked his bow staff, and I liked that he was the smart one. So the other turtles are going to be ahead of him on the list, right? Because nope. Donatello's... Donatello's the best. Raphael is a little bitch, and Michelangelo didn't take anything seriously. Michelangelo was obnoxious. Yeah, he was. Ugh. Jim, number five? Number five, I am going to go with Augustus Gummy. What's that from? The Gummy Bears. Is it? Yes. Gummy Bears, Gummy Bears. Thanks, Jim. Where did Gustav go? I don't know. 
See, if you don't, if you don't even know the characters, I don't think you can sing the song anymore. Uh, no, I can. It's going to happen. But you have to wear the mask the entire night. That's fine. Oh, now he's breaking things. I'm wearing the mask. All right, I found my list. Okay. Uh, let's see. My number five, I picked Igu. What's that from? Uh, it's from the Herculoids. The Herculoids. Oh. He is the uh, the rock ape from the Herculoids. Damn it! Quit hitting the table. Sorry, apologize. Number four. Uh, number four for me, I have Gloop from the Herculoids. From the Herculoids. Okay. <laughs> Since the theme. Uh, number four for me uh, was uh, I hobied it. Oh no, it goes to Jim. I'm sorry. Number uh, four for you. Sorry. Number four for me is a bedtime bear. <sighs> Oh. Care Bear Stare. I got in trouble for doing the Care Bear Stare in college. Oh, well, that's because you would just pull up your shirt and show your tummy to people. <laughs> there was also an elementary school around. So? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, number four for me, I hope he did. Plucky Duck from Tiny Toons and Daffy Duck from Looney Tunes. My, uh, two of my favorite guys there. Uh, number four for you, Jim Brian. Tiny in there. Toony, and they're all a little loony all a little in this cartoony. They're invading your TV. Hey. Uh, number four for me, I'm going to go with Ren and Stimpy. Oh. oh. Okay. You were uh, allowed to watch Ren and Stimpy as a child? I mean, yeah, pretty much. Uh, number three for you? Uh, number three for me, I'm going to go with the Yogi Bear. Hey, boo-boo. I'm voiced by Art Carney. I just ate those uh, picnickers. Mm, yummy. <laughs> Would you like a leg? Yummy, yummy, yummy. Why do you ruin everything? It's just my makeup. <laughs> like, it's like just it. my makeup? <laughs> you're, blaming, <laughs> you're blaming your makeup job? Yes. <laughs> it's my blush. Uh, my number three, uh, I had Velma from a pup named Scooby-Doo. Ah, Velma, huh? Yeah. I liked it because she had the big glasses. She brought the computer out. They were all good. I mean, the best was Red Herring. That's my honorable mention. Oh. <laughs> I had that as an honorable mention. Mm, put it on the board. Put it on the board. <laughs> Number three for you, Jim? I'm going to go with uh, Jem. From Jem and the Holograms? Jem and the Holograms. Mm. Truly outrageous. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Truly outrageous. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, my number three is Gleep, the <laughs> smaller of the two protoplasmic creatures. Uh, uh, is the, that from the Herculoids? That's from the Herculoids, <laughs> yes. Uh, number two? Uh, number two is Tundro. Oh, Thundercast. From, from the Herculoids? No, from the Herculoids, yes. <laughs> the, the ten-legged, four-horned uh, rhino triceratops hybrid, yes. Do you, do you like the Herculoids? Uh, it was uh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> number two for you, Jim? Uh, number two for me, I am going to go with Banana Man. What's that from? The Adventures of Banana Man. Okay. Okay. Uh, my number two is from G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, Snake Eyes. Uh, I did like a sp- I did like Spirit, though, too. That was a close. I uh, almost edged it out. I couldn't tell. Oh, I- so close. It was. So close. Love G.I. Joe. Real American Hero. Go, Joe. Uh, Banana Man was a better hero. Hmm. Number two for you, Brian? Uh, number two for me, I'm going to go with um, the Animaniacs. They're tiny. They're toony. They're all a little loony. And then this cartoony, they're invading, invading your, your TV. TV. Hey. Which is, of course, the Tiny Toon Adventure theme song, not the Animaniacs theme song. Oh. We're <laughs> Animaniacs. My, my question still stands. <laughs> Why? Why do you ruin everything? I did do the Tiny Toon <laughs> Sure did. <laughs> Apologize for that. Now, is that all Animaniacs or just the Warner Brothers and Sister? Uh, Warner Brothers and Sister. Okay. Uh, so one. not the, the uh, Pinky and the Good Pinky Feathers. Brain. Pinky and the Brain. Pinky and the Brain. Brain, 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 Brain. What are we going to do today, Brain? Same thing we, same thing we do every day. Try and take over the world. Uh, number one for you, Brian? Uh, number one for me will be Bobby from Bobby's World. Oh, that's a good one. Howie Mandel's. That's a good one. That was a good show. I really I enjoyed that. I loved Bobby's World. That was a fun show to watch. Uh, but not not the uh, Life with Louie or whatever the Louie Anderson show yeah, was? Yeah, I didn't really watch that. <laughs> I caught, like, I didn't, I just didn't watch it as much as I, like. 
I think they were back to back, like uh, once they went to the afternoons. Uh, they could have been. Uh, I was a child, so I don't <laughs> really remember the the programming pointless guide knowledge up here. Um, my number one for me is Batman from the animated series, and I hope he did it with Spider Man from the animated series uh, that he did. Uh, both of those characters, both of those shows were amazing. I love the Batman, um, how they drew him, how they just did the whole show. So, number one, Jim, uh, the greatest sidekick to ever <gasps> be on television. I know that answer. It's Penfold. He was the hamster on Danger Mouse. That oh. was Jim's favorite. I can attest Danger to that. Danger Mouse was? Or Penfold? Penfold is the character Penfold from the Danger character Mouse. is my favorite of all time. Okay. Uh, number one for you? <laughs> uh, number one for me, I've got Zock, the bat-winged laser dragon from the Herculoids. I was hoping that you would pick a <laughs> different show. <laughs> I thought about it, but... I I couldn't leave Zock off. He's my favorite of all uh, that is true. cartoon characters. Uh, let's see here. We did have, before we get to honorable mentions, let's see what everyone else said here. Uh, we had listeners. We had, uh, let's see here. Doctor number one had Scrappy-Doo. Doctor number one hates us. Hulk Hogan, Mr. <laughs> T, Pac-Man, and Rambo. God, Rambo Pac- did have his own cartoons. He did. Pac-Man was terrible. Uh, yes, yes, it was. Jacoba. Jacobo. Uh, at, Jacobo. Jacobo. Uh, at Tweets by J- Jacobo. Had uh, honorable mentions was Darkwing Duck and Doug. Not our number one fan. Uh, the other Doug. Yeah. The animated cartoon Doug. Yes. Uh, he had Pinky. And the Brain Brain Brain. Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. Oh, Dexter was good. Yakko Warner. Johnny Bravo. I'm Johnny Bravo. Forgot about that. And Bugs Bunny. Good one. Uh, Doug, he had Hong Kong Fooey. Hong Kong Fooey. Mutley. Number one super, super guy. <laughs> Hong Kong Fooey. Space Ghost. Quicker than the human arm. Dick Dasterly. Oh, this is a good one. Quick Draw McGraw. Uh, let's see here. And then we did have a couple on our Facebook page. You can follow us at the uh, History of Bad Ideas Facebook page here. We had, uh, let's Fire see. Fire off a follow for us. Uh, yeah. Bennett Dyer had, I hope he did, and did shows, not characters. That's fine. Perfectly show, perfectly fine. In a very in a very particularly order, I'm guessing not a particular order, uh, Banana Man, mm-hmm. uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle, Mask, and just the public service announcements of G.I. Joe. Hey, barbecue! <laughs> hey! Those Pork are, chop sandwiches! Look, these are electrical wires! Let's jump them! Hey, boys, let's not jump those. I Thanks, barbecue! I need to ask, Mask, is he talking about the Mobile Armored yes. Strike Command? M-A-S-K or? with periods in between. Not okay. the Share cartoon. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, I was going <laughs> to talk about the Jim Carrey. No, I don't uh, think it's yeah, it. One of my uh, honorable mentions was Matt Tracker, Hondo McLean, Dusty Hayes, Bruce Sato, Nash Gorey, Bruno Shepard, Boris Bushkin, Miles Mayhem, Alex Sector, Floyd Malloy, Jacques LaFleur, T Bob, Brad Turner, Julio Lopez, Sly. Those are all the characters in Mask. That is a <laughs> shit ton of characters from the Mask. I didn't know they had that many. Uh, Mrs. A Pants. Uh, sent something in. Scooby Doo, Flintstones, the Laugh Olympics, just the whole Laugh Olympics, well, and Bugs Bunny. Laugh Olympics. Was and then great we show. had David Brooks. He had no particular order. Jerry from Tom and Jerry. Uh, Casey Jones from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's a good one. April O'Neil was much better. Uh, Garfield. Uh, that was an honorable mention for me. Uh, Fozzie from Muppet Babies. And Batman. So there you go. Thanks, everybody, for sending them in. Um, I will say I had an honorable mention of oh. Nibbles <laughs> from uh, from Tom, Tom and Jerry. Jerry. It's uh, Jerry's nephew, nephew oh, the one with the good. diaper. That was cute. I always liked the episodes that Nibbles was in. And I also had from the Super Friends, Aquaman. Oh, yeah. He was the best of all the Super Friends. Just couldn't get out of the ocean. He was out in the ocean all the time. Did you have an honorable mention? Uh, <clears throat> I had uh, DuckTales. Woo! Uh, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Solve the mystery. Rewrite history. Is that all? Is that it? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> My uh, honorable mentions were Daria. Oh. Uh, oh, come on. You were not growing up with Daria. No. Uh, Brack. <laughs> Brack. Uh, and Sheldon. From? 
Garfield and Friends. Oh, the egg. He was part the, of the, the actual egg. egg. Yeah, the, uh, the unhatched chicken. Yes, nine twenty nine. Uh, I had Red Herring from uh, Pup Name Scooby Doo. Voltron. Because the rest of the show wasn't very good, but when it became a giant robot, it was cool. Uh, I actually was just the opposite. I liked when they did the things when it became a giant robot, I lost interest. Oh, right. uh, Garfield from Garfield and Friends. And Launchpad from Duck pa- DuckTales. So, uh, there's some good. I like that list. I like that all around. Um, let's see here. If you have a idea for a top five sh- uh, list, send it on over to us at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter, or uh, find us at the History of Bad Ideas. Damn it! Would uh, you stop it, Jason? Will you stop it? Uh, on uh, Instagram and the History of Bad Ideas at Facebook page. Um, also, when you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. That helps us a lot. So we appreciate that. Or on YouTube, um, we do get YouTube uh, updates. And uh, if you leave a comment there, too. So, um, titles for the show? Oh, I'm sorry. Bad Idea of the Week. Bad Idea of the Week, number 212. Okay. Continually hitting the tabletop okay. while we're trying to record. Uh, bad Idea number 505, trying to sue a company to get your job back. <laughs> That's a casting job. Yeah. yeah Fine. We're going job. to hire you back. We're not writing her character anymore. <laughs> we're not doing a Mad Libs? You want to do a quick Mad Libs? Yes. Go ahead. Always want to do a quick Mad Libs. I just let you know this gummy bear's mask is not very comfortable. Not at all. It's not supposed to be. Yeah, so if you're going to sing the song, you have to wear it. Okay. That's fair. That is fair. All right. You got one? Yeah. Of course I've got one. Go ahead. Uh, Jeff, give me a part of the body. (laughs) Nutsack. (laughs) What are you, five? Yep. Oh, shut up. <laughs> like you're anybody to talk. Uh, Jason, give me an adjective. Veiny. <laughs> Ooh, what are you, five? You Six. used that one last week. Oh, well, I'm using it again. Uh, Jim, can I have an adjective as well? I'll go smelly. Jeff, a verb? Um, thought provoke. Oh, no, that's an adjective. Think. Ging. Or Jason. think if you don't need an ing. However that works. Actually, I don't. Okay. Uh, Jason, can I have a verb ending in ing? <laughs> Bouncing. Jim, can I have a verb? Wow, lots of verbs. I will go with drink. Jeff, can I have a noun? Good podcasting here. Platform. Jason, can I have a noun? Stilettos. He didn't say plural noun. Sorry. I did not. I said noun. Stiletto. Uh, Jim, can I have an adjective? Greasy. Stiletto was a good character from Danger Mouse, too. Yeah. He was the bad guy's uh, right-hand man. Gotcha. Uh, Jeff, can I have a plural noun, please? Greenbacks. <laughs> he, he, he was a great uh, bad guy in uh, <laughs> Danger Mouse. Baron Von Greenback. <laughs> uh, Jason, give me an occupation. Vigilante. Doesn't pay well. Doesn't, but it's a jo- it's occupation. Ooh, maybe if I ever... Not like, a long career, either. If I, if I ever make it onto like, a game show or something, they always ask, you, you'd say what your occupation mm-hmm. is. Maybe vigilante is. That might be good. Uh, Jim, give me a noun, please. Uh, I will go tabletop. Jeff, can I have a plural noun? Ooh, a plural noun. Tabletops. Go. Means more than one. Balloons. Jason, give me an adjective. Mm, colorful. Jim, give me a verb ending in ing. Burning. <laughs> Feels like burn. Uh, Jeff, finish us up with a part of the body. Oh, a second part of the body. Don't. Um, medulla oblongata. Chode. Or chode. <laughs> <laughs> What are you, seven? God. 
be mature. Nope. We have a mature podcast. Perineum. All right. This is called A Sampling of Adventurers Part 1. Oh, Ooh, Part Ooh. 1. We'll have to do Part 2 next week. <clears throat> yes. If you are scratching your nutsack trying to pick an adventurer, here are some veiny types that you can <laughs> choose from. <laughs> Number one, fighter. You are strong, smelly, and ready to think. <laughs> you are a master of bouncing with weapons and ready to drink into battle to defend the platform. Uh, number two, wizard. You are a stiletto of the arcane arts. Your intelligence makes makes you a greasy teammate with the interest in finding greenbacks and scrolls <laughs> to enhance your power. It's not bad. Number three, cleric. You are a healer and a vigilante who harnesses divine tabletop. <laughs> You like are it's... often called on by the balloons you worship to undertake colorful <laughs> quests. It's not bad. That was not fits. bad. And number four, uh, Rogue. Burning in the shadows is what you live for. You are a medulla oblongata, <laughs> stabbing scoundrel and proud of it. Cleric isn't too bad. I like the burning in the shadows. That is kind of fun. That's a good title. It is a good title. Title for the show, Burning in the Shadows. Well, I have some other ones. Yeah. I do, too. I have, I have uh, Baptizing You Against Your Will. Uh, the, it's, it's called the National Bible Bee. <laughs> <laughs> the Nude Hedgehog. Alabama Trailers. More Cookie Than Man. Uh, freeze-Dried Fish. And that's it. The only thing I had was 18th Century Gummy Bears. <laughs> I had uh, DJ Fat Fingers. <laughs> I have Why Do You Ruin Everything? And I have Jason is the new Blake. Ooh. You kept on dropping stuff on the table. Jason is the new Blake. <laughs> How many times did you drop your phone on the table? Five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. Ryan, what do you got? You see oh, how annoying sorry. that is? <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to uh, read my list here. Uh, uh, let's see here. I had, no, Jason Treat is an asshole. Uh, I had, why do you ruin everything? Uh, the guy in the wheelchair for the sexiest X-Man. Uh, and DJ Fat Fingers. I like DJ Fat Fingers. I, I can't be against DJ Fat Fingers. I do Fingers. like more cookie than man. <laughs> but I like Jason is the new Blake. Stop it. <laughs> Jason's new Blake? God damn it. Change approved. <laughs> it's got to be majority rules. Jeff? Well, what are you picking? I like DJ Fat Fingers. God, I like DJ Fat Fingers, too. Oh, man. But if we need majority rules, I guess I'll have to change it to Jason is the new Blake. <laughs> Neither of them are going to budge. I don't like I could be. I could be bought... Yeah, I, 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 I got uh, peeps oh. down here for you. I'm not again. Oh, <laughs> Jason <laughs> is definitely going with Jason. <laughs> Jason the is the new Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. We will see you next week. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad. There's the history. It's the history of bad. So bad. History of bad, it's bad. History of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You've been listening to Hobie.